A product of my environment. Written by Carlon Campbell Robinson. Prologue. Six normal white shirted prison officers and one senior officer. The security around me was airtight as we walked along the badly lit Old Bailey underground corridor. I was double cuffed and frog marched down a narrow flight of stairs. Keys clanged as they were turned one way and then another. The courtroom looked old school, old fashioned old panelling. The fancy dress attire completed the theme. The silence clarified I was now in hostile captivity. Attempted murder times two. Possession of a submachine gun, kidnap, torture. The grey-haired judge stared at me with pure disgust and contempt as the short blonde clerk read out the list of stuff I stood trial for. Before the trial, the CPS had informed my QC that, if found guilty, the judge intended to hit me with an L plate. I felt like they were trying to squeeze my throat a little, in hope that I became super nervous and pleaded guilty. Fuck that. I decided to roll the dice. If found guilty, I expected no mercy. Three months later, I was found guilty on all charges, except the submachine gun rap. The trial judge didn't disappoint. I was sentenced to a double life sentence and a hundred years, with a recommendation that I serve at least nine years, nine months. Yeah, I was crushed, pissed. After the hearing and listening to the legal arguments, I felt super tired and indicated to the screws that I was done. The seven-man private security team escorted me back to the old Bailey Cat A holding cell. The handcuffs were removed, and I was allowed to use the toilet. While I pissed, I heard voices, familiar voices. I shook the strange drops from my pole, produced a double razor toothbrush from my arse cheeks, stepped out of the cubicle and turned to see my first gang rival, an original top man man named leader, Mark Lambie. He was with ten prison officers and his two co-defendants, Blue and C1, tense, my eyes locked with Mark's. The cut throat was now in the palm of my hand. Blue was the first to flinch. He stepped away from Mark and was like, Nothing to do with me, my brother. This statement caught Mark totally off guard and left him vulnerable. I watched C1's brain quickly ticking over as he attempted to work out who I was and why Blue had jumped onto the fence. I made my decision. I wanted Mark where I could do him real damage inside the holding cell. 